So here we are, I have with me co-owner of ERX Motor Park and Carlson Motorsports team owner, Chris Carlson. Chris is gonna show me his stout vintage sled collection. Of course, you and your family have such a deep history, deep roots in snowmobiling. So uh, let's do a little bit of a walkthrough first here. Um, I understand all brands here. Many of the brands are present. Yes, yeah, we, we try not to uh leave any out and uh, these are more, it's more about great sleds from different eras and, and then sleds that have some uh, meaning to, to their family, to racing, childhood, something like that. So yeah, they're all represented. And one that is, is very special, the same model, I understand, of the first snowmobile you purchased when you were a teenager. Yeah, th so this is a 77 Polaris TX340 free air, and this this was the first snowmobile I bought as a teenager, $1,400 back in the day. Um, yeah, and it was a great sled, and, and I found this a few years ago. A guy had it in a garage, covered up in the corner, had 62 miles on it, original miles. So this is unrestored and we, we pull it out and ride it, and it sure brings back a lot of memories. <laughs> now, of course, uh, his son, Andrew Carlson, and his daughter, Taylor Carlson, she also raised pro women snowcross, so a lot of family history here. Uh, walk me down the line here, what else are we seeing? So that's a 77 TXL, that's the first uh, factory liquid-cooled sled that Polaris produced, and they were great runners, very, very popular back in the day. Um, 72 Arctic, 650 EXT, so limited build, 160 some sleds made, factory race program, triple, uh, triple pipes, uh, great sled, and we still run this one. And this is a Starfire 76, that was race only, so that was very limited production. That's got a uh, cowl crank induction system, so pulls in cold air from the bottom to cool it down, which was always a problem with these free air sleds and had the fancy loop on the handlebars, which indicates that it was designed for turning left. And, uh, and that was a great sled back in the day. And these are, these are Andrew's race sleds. The one on the right is, is a, um, I think it was a 2000, no, oh, I don't even remember the year, eight or nine. Um, and that was a sled he ran in the junior class and won a points championship. So uh, we saved it and kept it up here. And then of course the one on the left is, uh, a Polaris factory mod, and that was the last uh, last sled he raced before he retired. So someday he'll appreciate this, or his kids will appreciate it. That's outstanding. Kind of fun. And uh, now on this side here, the the Polaris, the Indy. You, of course, the fans you don't know, the Light Shield. That was mm -hmm. really the product that started it all with you and your family's business, yeah. Sport Tech. And uh, there's some history with this sled. Yeah, yeah. So this this is uh, from that era. This was the standard Indy chassis. 1993, uh, we developed the headlight cover, the light shield, and of course, uh, this one doesn't have one on there, oddly enough, but uh, just a simple plastic piece that slid in from behind that covered that headlight enclosure that kept debris, snow, and ice from gathering in there, and that was, yeah, that was the beginning of, uh, of Sport Tech and a product that we did very well with. Over on this side mm -hmm. of the showroom here, we're seeing some, some relics, the yeah. Mustang, the LT gray. Yep. Uh, what's, tell us about some of these models. Oh, so this is the Playmate that Polaris came out with. Um, that was designed um, to, to be able to put in the back of a station wagon. Uh, they had a couple models, they had a town and country in this Playmate. So it's kind of an introductory snowmobile, single cylinder, 250 cc. Um, kind of a unique sled, not really a race sled. Another 77 TX, obviously an era that's near and dear to me. Um, this little Z250 Arctic is, uh, is a fun sled. They were pretty cool back in the day. 250 cc twin cylinder. Then a, a 73 Polaris Starfire. They were great race sleds. Um, just I just have a lot of memories of watching them going around the Eagle River track and other oval tracks as a kid. Um, this is a, a 65 Mustang. It's the first uh, vintage sled that my dad ever restored. So that kind of got me going in this restoration thing. So that has sentimental value. And this one is actually really uh, fun. This is a 79 Polaris Centurion. So this is a triple cylinder, three cylinder sled. That was the first production triple that Polaris came out with. And that was, of course, the sled that really coined the phrase, the national anthem of snowmobiling, that, that unique sound of a triple. And they were wildly popular, super fast. Um, and this was the last model before they went to independent suspension in 1980. But 
Uh, this one we still ride and it runs great and it really rides nice and it's fun on the trail. So we take this one and then that blizzard next to it is one of my all time favorites, 6500 1960 or 78 Ski-Doo um, 340. Wild fast, super successful on the racetrack back in the day, lightweight and just, just a ton of fun. And that's another one that we always try to bring out at vintage rides, get the family together. And, and then I always make Andrew drive one like this so that he can really appreciate what these old sleds were like and uh, have to suffer through at 23 miles an hour through the woods. So. Man, these restorations are pristine, so beautiful. And I know, so for some of you fans on the snowcross side of things, especially, you'll really appreciate this one. You'll appreciate them all, but the 6.8. Yeah. yeah, the 6.8. I hope, I hope that uh, uh, everybody remembers that uh, this was a great sled. This was built by uh, TS Race Program. Uh, this is actually owned by Russ Ebert, a good friend of mine. And uh, Russ knew that we had a spot here where we could put some sleds. So one of Tucker's uh, great race sleds, he won the X Games with that, I think, um, 03. And uh, um, just a, an amazing machine, way ahead of its time back in the day. Those were hand-built race sleds and uh, they were a lot of fun to, to watch. So that's pretty special. The whole vintage um, program is about legacy and preserving memories. And as a, as a resident old guy in the sport, I feel somewhat obligated to keep it alive. That's why we love doing the ride-in event and, and the, you know, the ditch banger. I just think it's important that uh, youth today, some of these snow crossers are exposed to some of this, understand where we came from as a sport. Certainly the stories of sport tech in the old days, I, I think it's important for my family, now my, my kids and grandkids to understand kind of how this all got started. And then there's a sprinkling of, of articles about snow cross. This article here is kind of interesting. This was the first snow cross ever held in the city of Elk River. Long before ERX, um, I contacted the folks back in the day, it was WPSA, said, hey, let's put a regional race in Elk River. I think the community would accept it well. They agreed to it. We held it at the fairgrounds in Elk River and made snow from, from the uh, water tower and learned a lot, learned a lot about uh, building racetracks. It was not a great track, but we, that was the very beginning and we haven't missed since. There have been races in Elk River ever since. So, wow. a lot of fun. And now here we are today, 2022, the national continuous growth year after year. Now our fourth running of the ERX Snowcross National. Well, Chris Carlson, thank you so much for showing us around and thank you for all you're doing, for all the sports that you service here at ERX. You're so welcome, it's my pleasure. Mm -hmm.